I'm uh, really, really happy to have, uh, again, speaking at the Mid-Atlantic Marketing Summit, um, Sean Murphy, uh, EVP of e-commerce of Custom Inc. Many of you saw his absolutely incredible presentation uh, two years ago. I think I've, very few presentations have gotten as much uh, positive uh, feedback about Inky. I, I still hear people talking about uh, Inky and the logo uh, design of Custom Inc. Uh, as, as many of you know, Custom Inc. is absolutely one of the, the fastest growing companies, not only in the DC area, uh, but in, in the country. Um, I'm sure Sean will update us on their sales figures. It's hard keeping track, but last year over 200 million in sales, and uh, we'll, we'll hear what, uh, what it's uh, currently at, uh, the run rate. Um, Sean's uh, responsibility include directing Customink's major online customer acquisition channels and the teams that craft and build the online experience for designing and ordering custom t-shirts online. Prior to Custom Inc., Sean was COO of Capital Advantage. He's a graduate of the University of Texas um, at Austin. With that, let's welcome Sean. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Hello? I can't hear myself. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, great. Uh, so uh, first off, I just wanted to thank uh, Paul and Paul, who I, I think are putting together just uh, the premier event here in DC when it comes to digital marketing, and, and also to Gannett for uh, uh, hosting us here. I, I have to, uh, I got a little chuckle. The biggest chuckle in the last presentation from Rohit was about coffetivity. And I have to tell you, this entire presentation was created while I had the coffetivity app running yesterday. So uh, I hope maybe that's a good thing. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is walk you guys through uh, just a little bit about customing for those that don't know who we are, and an update from that last presentation I gave a couple years ago. And then uh, I'll dive in uh, to my untrends that uh, kind of complements uh, what Rohit walked us through a little bit earlier. So uh, if you don't know who we are, Custom Inc. is the uh, design online t-shirt company for groups and events. Uh, people come to our website and they create uh, shirts for causes, uh, events, uh, just the good times in life that are really important to them. And uh, this is really illustrated uh, in the, the photographs, the, the thousands of photographs customers send to us uh, that, that just show the, these really tender, warm moments of, of togetherness, uh, and you, you can see that expressed really, really uh, well right here. Now, when I tell people the party that I uh, work in the t-shirt the industry, I usually get the question, like, do you do that full time? <laughs> and actually, the t-shirt business is about one of the most complex businesses uh, that, that I have ever been a part of, and I worked with a bunch of different businesses. It spans everything from marketing and e-commerce, deep technology, fashion, design, service, and then there's the complexities that come from licensing and logistics and actual physical production. How many people produce an actual product in this room? Print something. Yeah, so you guys appreciate how difficult that can be. Gannett here, at least for the printing operations, uh, the, there's, a, there's a real challenge in doing that and pulling it off well. Uh, a little background on, on Custom Inc. We were founded in 2000, so we just celebrated our 14th birthday. Last year, we had sales of just over 170 million. This year, we expect to, to really crush through $200 million in sales, but that was 50% year-over-year growth last year. Just yesterday, we were named the 156th largest online retailer in America, and uh, it's something we're proud of, uh, just really representing Washington, D.C. As a, as a place of e-commerce. We've got 1,000 inkers, it's what we call ourselves, inkers, uh, in four locations. Our headquarters are here in D.C., uh, just down the road in the Mosaic District. Uh, but we also have production facilities in Charlottesville, Virginia, Reno, Nevada, and Dallas, Texas. And we're opening up probably another one soon. And then finally, we printed and delivered over 50 million t-shirts since we started the business. Our goal is actually to print one shirt for every person in America every year. So that's what we're trying to do someday. Uh, so let's uh, turn to, uh, so I want to give an update on uh, the branding presentation I did uh, a couple years ago. And uh, before we did our rebranding, we had a, what I would say, a pretty uninspired uh, identity. It was, uh, it did the job, it said who we are, and what, it said who we are and a little bit about what we do, 
but it was missing kind of this playful character uh, of who Custom Ink was. And so we went through a major rebranding, re and out of that came the lovable character of Inky, and this, this playful, uh, really uh, a fun personality that represented so much about what designing custom t-shirts is all about. And that, that change uh, wasn't just to our logo, it was a change to the entire website. Our identity and all the visual imagery that we used, and it completely overhauled the entire look and feel uh, of our business and the personality of our business. Now this change wasn't a, a, um, just a superficial change. It was actually who we were all along, but we finally found voice to it uh, through this rebranding process, and it's really helped the business. And so last, year, last time when I spoke to this event, uh, with this group, um, I had, we had just done the rebranding, and we only had about six months of results at the time, and they were very, very positive. And so to give everyone a little update, uh, that, that trend has continued. So this was our revenue growth over the years. Uh, it looks much more impressive if you have a, a higher, uh, uh, sorry, a, a lower um, uh, scale there. But since we've done the rebranding, uh, business ha has just been incredibly strong. So, so as I was preparing for this presentation, I was thinking a little bit about what got us to this point. How, how, did, how, how did Custom Inc. do this over the last decade? Uh, just a few days ago, or just a few weeks ago, we actually celebrated our first million dollar day. It was incredible for me, for someone who used to watch the orders trickle in one by one, to have a million dollar day. And so the theme for my presentation is the eight untrends for growing your business. And basically it's all about how we went from one million, uh, having, from having one million dollar months to having one million dollar days. Okay, so I've got eight trends. Can anyone tell me why uh, I said I picked the number eight? Octopus, yes. Who, who said octopuses? Okay, come down and see Erin in a few ways afterwards. She's got t-shirts for you. Yes, it was octopus. <laughs> uh, presentations at Custom Inc. are 20% easier, or top 10 lists are 20% easier than any other place. Uh, because of this. And also, I, I realized I had to outdo Rohit by uh, having eight untrends versus his seven uh, non-obvious ones. So untrend number one. Uh, I, I get, and I'm sure all of you as well, get pitched on all sorts of really interesting and great ideas for how you can improve your business. Uh, just this morning, and I'm not joking, I checked my email this morning, I looked at it, and, and I think the headline or the, the message was about how uh, I should really take a look at mobile video retargeting on Facebook. Okay. This combination of all these fabulous things you can do. Now, I don't know what the potential of that is. Uh, I'll certainly uh, listen at some point. But uh, I, I'm here to say, as we've grown the custom ink business, that search is still king. Okay. If you are not focusing, if your site is not showing up the way you need to show up online, uh, if people can't find you, if you're not saying all the things that you do online, then that's the big opportunity for you. It's not mobile search remarketing on Facebook. Okay? And just to illustrate that, here is the customing search trend. Uh, that looks very much like that revenue trend I, I shared with you a second ago. Search is still king. And just make sure you're doing the best you can though. There are tons of fantastic consultants uh, and agencies that can help you with this. And, and, and just as an insider for someone who's been doing this for a while, it, it's still the thing that moves the needle. So the second trend uh, I arrived at uh, through uh, a, a difficult hard lesson. Uh, so so once we were getting some search, uh, our search engine traction was really working, as a leadership team we thought, hmm, what else is just like search? Okay? Where else can we apply what we learned from search where, where people have this high intent to purchase, they're ready to buy, they're looking for something, uh, a place where they can spend their money. And I know all of you are thinking the yellow pages. <laughs> but that's what we did is we went and we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to have custom ink ads in yellow pages all around the country. And guess what we got? About 3,000 phone calls, 
about half of them for the carpet place that had gone out of business who had had that 800 number before. It really didn't work at all. But what I learned from the agent who I worked with on that deal was this concept of YZ Addy, this acronym. Uh, this term is actually making the rounds in some books, so some of you may have seen this. But it stands for, what does it stand for? What you see is all there is. What does that mean? YZ Addy is a cognitive shortcut that we all make every day in trying to make decisions. It's a shortcut that says we only consider the information before us in making a decision. Uh, a classic example of this in the psychology books is uh, if I was to tell you about a fictional person named Patrick and I wanted you to evaluate whether he would be a good leader, and if I told you he was strong and intelligent, do you think he would be a good leader? And your instinct, everyone in this room probably said yes, because strong and intelligent are positive traits. That was at least the instinct. Now, who knows whether being strong and intelligent make any difference at all to the, whether someone is going to be successful or not, but because that's the two pieces of information I put before you, that's what you use to make the decision. Now, what does YZ Addy mean to all of us as marketers, right? Well, another way of putting it is if you don't say it, you don't do it. And I learned this in the yellow pages because this is what you see, and they've known this for how, I don't know how long the yellow page has been around, 40, 50 years, uh, maybe more. But in the yellow pages, they flood the page with everything that these businesses do. Uh, you'll, you'll see this person talks about, they, they print for churches and schools and businesses. Someone else talks about all the different products they print on. This person says they deliver. And the odds are, if you needed shirts delivered, that was the one you were going to call, not the other ones. What you say is all you do. Okay? And this comes back really nicely to search engine marketing and your website. You've got to be presenting all the use cases. Everything you do needs to come through on your website, in your blog. When people are doing that search, it's with search engine marketing, it's such a micro-targeted search. You've got to have the exact perfect content for those people when they arrive on your site. Why is he Addy? What you say is all there is. For untrend number three um, is uh, an idea that I call own your industry's data. At Custom Inc., when people place an order with us, the order comes in and it goes down two independent paths. The first path is the most important one is the production path that we go through in, in making sure the art is perfect, we get the shirts ordered, we check the quality, move into printing and production and quality, and finally shipping it out to you so it arrives on time. The second path that order goes down is a data analysis path that we have at Custom Inc. where we have real people looking and analyzing each and every order that comes through the doors and try to understand more about it. What was the intent behind it? And we classify those orders into hundreds of segments that identify all the reasons people are ordering custom t-shirts and we add all this other rich data. And out of that, we get really fantastic understandings of all our different types of customers. Only by doing this, and these are fictional segments here, Quidditch and Aerocross as two sports that order from us, but you can see the ordering patterns are very different for these segments. The timing, uh, the, there's also the, the types of orders, what products they order, and what we do is we fill our database with all this extra metadata to understand, to develop the premier understanding of t-shirts, custom t-shirts in America, and groups and occasions activity. We've developed a database like that that enables us to have uh, uh, what I would say is almost an unfair advantage in understanding the marketplace. Because of this, we're able to tune our marketing spend to Quidditch people versus Aerocross people. And some of the stuff is really non-obvious. You would think, oh, track and field teams, when do they run? Volleyball teams, when, they, when do they run? But the, or when do they start playing? That's when you need to start advertising to them. But it's actually, uh, we, we found that, that it's not as obvious as it seems. The ordering patterns for all of our different customer segments are very different. We're also able to extract, you know, what are the most popular colors, and this is not a real one. Although blue is the most popular color. Um, that those aren't actual percentages. But, uh, uh, but own your industry's data. So create uh, wh whatever your data that you have coming in is. Just make it rich. Enhance it. And you'll find that really good things come out of it. 
The fourth untrend is another cognitive principle, a cognitive shortcut that we use. And the, this is the idea uh, really around how when you're familiar with something, when you think you've heard of something, you like it more. Okay? Studies have been shown that if you've heard someone's name before, you're more likely to go on a date with them. Okay? <laughs> or studies have shown that if you have heard the name of a company, or even you think you've heard the name of a company, it sounds like something else, some, someone, a company you've heard of, you're more likely to choose that company or consider it. And so I call my fourth untrend that half of branding is simply familiarity. Okay? We're flooded with all sorts of advice on how we can brand our company, position who we are, get our message across. This is uh, the current issue of Entrepreneur that I read a couple nights ago when I was coming home from Easter. Uh, and it had, you know, Seth Godin in there with this amazing definition of what a brand is. And it talked about what Virgin America does and what Nike does and, and what good business article doesn't men mention Apple. Uh, they all talked about these amazing things that these companies do, but most of the stuff is not the type of things that you and I can do as marketers. The simple, the simple thing about branding is that most of it is just have they heard of you before. It's very, very simple. And so there's a great example that uh, I really like. How many of you have ever heard of or used the company Omniture for analytics? Okay, a, a lot of you have. Uh, so back in the early days of uh, the emergence of, of online analytics vendors, um, th this company Omniture was just the Wild West. There were 50 companies, everyone's trying to win this, this space. And Omniture was not getting calls. No one was calling them, they weren't being considered at all. And so Josh James, their, their CEO, kind of rolled the dice uh, of the company. And at the premier industry trade show, they went out and they gave away a Hummer uh, to you know, the four or 500 people, like the people here in this room. Uh, and, and the way he gave it away was he asked everyone to play rock, paper, scissors. So you pick the person next to you, and there's a little playoff, and finally there were people on stage. Now the thing he did with the rock, paper, scissors, the twist that he had, is that he asked people to play omniture, omniture. And they repeated that over and over again. And at, after that event, he gave away the Hummer. He got a call for every single analytical program that was out, out there. And he said that is what won the space for his business, was that moment where everyone had finally heard of his company. So branding. You know, half of it is just familiarity. Make sure you're getting your word out there. So for untrend number five, uh, this is something that I hope most of you are doing. If not, uh, you should do it by the end of the day. It's that easy, okay? And it comes down to user testing. Okay? I found that you can do, for an untested page or website, that you can do three tests and get a 30% lift for under $100 and in less than an hour. There are so many powerful online tools where you can have people, any type of person that you want, come to your website and you can get a full video session of what they do for 15 bucks. Okay? These are some great cartoons I lifted off the web uh, that kind of show the frustration people have with, uh, here's the engineer yelling at the tester saying, that's not the way you use it. Uh, or what, what, what you know, the insiders want on the website versus what customers actually want to see on the website. But the most interesting one is this uh, chart from Jacob Nielsen, which shows that uh, with just three tests, you identify 70% of the issues on that page. Three tests. And now with these tools that you can use, $15 a test, Create the user scenario right now. You can create it on your phone while you're here. And you'll find out the issues with your website and find that left. This is so easy to do. Everyone should be doing it. Moving on to untrend number five, or number six. Uh, I had to borrow this one uh, from, uh, well, the, the, the idea behind it is what won't change. Basing your strategy on what won't change. What does that mean? Well, I borrowed it from number one on the list of the top internet retailer companies, which is basing your strategy on things that will not change. This is what Jeff Bezos said when he rolled out Prime, the two-day shipping for free. 
And the whole idea behind it is, he said is he wanted to appeal to human instinct, human nature. What was he appealing to? Our need for instant gratification. We want things sooner. We want it immediate, okay? And so that's what they launched. Uh, the whole idea is that people are always gonna want things faster, and so we always need to work on delivering things faster. And it was also, in retrospect, he said a reason why they did uh, all the reviews on the website was that that is what people wanted. They wanted to hear what other people thought about a product. So focus on the things that won't change, not the sexy new uh, uh, thing, but, but, but focus on the things that really appeal to human instinct and human nature. We do that at Custom Inc. just uh, as an aside. Uh, first off, we focus on groups. Uh, we, we feel that there's just a, like a, almost a primal instinct that we all have uh, about just dressing alike. It's almost like going to war paint. You know, people put paint on and then all of a sudden you want to be together and you feel real strong. There's something really magical about groups. And, and uh, we, we've also borrowed uh, from Jeff Bezos. We're delivering faster and faster for our, for our customers now in a week. Uh, custom t-shirts delivered in a week. And, and then uh, we, we also have a very strong talk to a real person uh, culture at our company that you can always uh, reach, uh, re grab your phone and call us and you're gonna get a hello when you call, not an IVR or some voicemail or anything like that. So untrend number seven is really about customer service and I call this fixing the difficult things. If all of you can take a second and go to that place you don't wanna go right now and think about a time you were really mad with a company. Okay. If you can't think of anything, think of an airline, <laughs> your cable company, or a politician. Okay. You got, you're there? Okay. You're really mad. And what did you want uh, to happen when you were really mad and you had this difficult experience? I argue there's two things people want. The first thing is they want you to fix the problem, obviously. And hopefully they get an you get an apology along the way. But the second thing that often isn't voiced, but I bet you guys all feel it, is that you want an assurance that this isn't gonna happen to anyone else. It's actually a pretty neat human nature instinct thing that we have, that we're like, you know, I, want, I don't want anyone else to lose their bags on the night before their wedding, right? Or whatever it may be, there's just this human instinct uh, that this is what we want. And this is what sets apart great customer service is when you can deliver on this but it's not easy to do this. The first, the first one requ requires you know, fully empowering the, and giving ownership to the people in the front lines of your business. They've gotta be able to solve the problems uh, for, for people when, the, when they're encountered right there on the spot and they know what to do and they know how to do the right thing. The second one is so much harder. That requires an organizational commitment to ferret out the root causes of systemic problems. It's a lot of words there. It means fixing the things that happen, the bad things that happen over and over and over again in your business. And at Custom Inc, we're by no means perfect and, and there's a, we have a long list of things that we need to work on and improve. But as a culture, we're always driving out the, the problems that prevent us from delivering all the right shirts in all the right colors in all the right sizes with fantastic printing always delivered on the day we promised. That's what we promise to do for our customers and any time something is interrupting that, as a whole organization we jump in and fix that problem. And this is uh, one of the other really great things that comes out of this is that your frontline people know that when your organization does this, that they have credibility when they talk to customers and say, no, we're gonna, we're gonna fix this problem. You know, it's not gonna happen again. Otherwise, they're not gonna really believe what happens unless a whole, whole organization is behind them to deliver on this. So the eighth untrend is that all of you really need to have an octopus as your logo. <laughs> Makes all the difference in the world. Uh, not really, uh, it, it's that design matters. I think uh, all of us increasingly appreciate this uh, today, but this was certainly one that, that I didn't start appreciating until uh, later in my career, that, that it makes a huge difference. And uh, just to borrow a quote here from uh, Chuck Anderson, the, the designer and creator of Inky, 
uh, he talks about how you need to have personality. You need to have a point of view with your, your logo, your identity, who you are. Come across, take a point of view. He says even be ugly or abrasive. But whatever you do, don't be uninteresting. Okay. So those are my eight untrends for growing your business. Uh, I'm certainly happy to, to take questions. But before I do, I have a question for you. Do so we want t-shirts? Yeah? OK. So here's the deal. Uh, hopefully everyone knows the Wizards are uh, in the, the playoffs. They've won their first two games. We actually have a winning team. Yay. <laughs> uh, and Custom Inc. Is, going to, is printing shirts for the entire stadium, red, white, and blue. It's going to be an awesome event. It's going to be sold out. Uh, so we've got, uh, just to give you a peek, um, so this is the, the shirts here. These are the red ones here. And so I've got a question for you uh, and to, to give away the shirt. And there, there's a catch, however, uh, with, the, uh, with the shirt is you don't get it today, but rather you have to pick it up at your seats at the game on Friday. OK? So the question, and you need to tweet your answer, OK? is how many shirts did Custom Ink print for the Wizards game? Okay. Tweet your answer without going over. So this, this is Price is Right rules. Okay. The closest uh, without going over wins the tickets. And tweet them, and I'll take questions in the interim. It, questions if there are any. Hopefully there are some, and I'll talk about that. Great. Yeah. We, we've got uh, questions. Yeah, just raise your hand, and we'll bring a mic to you. What are the three tests that you mentioned? Uh, so the three tests, so uh, the, there, are, there aren't particular tests. The idea behind user testing is that you create a scenario uh, for people that, to go through your website. So say the purpose of your website is to learn about a service you offer. You say, hey, imagine um, you, need, you need to buy, uh, you, know, you need to get a locksmith. Uh, go find one online and they visit your website and, and you ask some questions along the way to see would they pick that, that company or not. So basically it's, it's running at least three people through that same scenario in user testing. Sorry if I was unclear about that. Question? I have a question over here. Um, the oh, branding, I'm here, sorry, okay. shorter. <laughs> can't see me. Um, the, the branding piece, um, one of the things that I run up against a lot is that uh, branding's not measurable, right? So you spend a lot of money on big splashy ads, a whole rebrand, um, and then there's no uh, ROI revenue driven outcome. So how did you guys measure that? And then also I'm a B2B company, so it's slightly different yeah. uh, than a B2C company. No, I can certainly appreciate how difficult that is in B2B. I, I uh, all before Custom Inc. had all worked entirely in B2B and understand how that is. It, it is a tricky thing. You know, there's the old adage about half of my brand budget is uh, wasted, uh, but unfortunately I just don't know which half of my brand budget is unwasted. Uh, it, it's a tough call. I, I, all I can say is that, that from Custom Inc.'s perspective, we just felt we weren't getting our personality across, who we actually were. Over and over again, we heard people visit us and said, wow, you guys are such a cool company, but you're so dry online. And if you feel you've got that type of reaction, then you should take a hard look at your website and, and strengthen that brand. But as you can see, you know, we, we tied it to numbers as well. I mean, we, we saw a huge boost in the business when we really worked hard on getting that, our identity figured out right. Sorry I don't have an easier answer for you. There, there is no magic bullet for that. Tweet, 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 tweet. Hi. Yeah, uh, sorry. Is that, is that Hi. <laughs> Wave um, your hands or dance or jiggle. Yeah, it's me. Oh, there you are. Okay. Um, white shirt lady. Um, you talked about sort of your 50% year over year growth over the last couple of years, and, and you thought a lot of that was due to your rebranding. Um, if you had to point to one other thing that attributed to that growth, what would it be? Uh, so I think the rebranding encompasses uh, a, a bunch uh, of different things. It's tough to pick one, one thing. We also, because we had done the rebranding, we finally felt, felt okay to go into broadcast marketing. So we launched radio and television advertising as a result. So that was a, a huge thing. But then again, that's not something that every company can go and do. But we, we really upgraded uh, the whole experience. The, the, the rebranding and the idea around design matters 
uh, transform the business to elevate our whole game, uh, to get all those little details as he was talking about earlier, right, uh, made a big difference. So may, maybe if I would just really point at something that's actionable for most people would be just getting all the little details, the details that show you care. Make sure those come through. Uh, I was not planning to make the presentation available. I can send this list, but some of the numbers I don't want to publish, but I can send the, or if you tweet me, I can send you the, the top eight list. Hi. Um, so you said search is still king, and you obviously showed that chart with your search um, improving. Um, and I just wanted to know what were maybe the three biggest things that you did in search to kind of fuel that growth? So what were the three biggest things that we did? Uh, I don't know if I can come up with three on the spot. I could probably come up with 100. Uh, and, and basically, uh, it just, they're, they're just innumerable things. But I think the, the thing to start with is, uh, is just having all the content. Uh, we, we create uh, content for every type of reason you would possibly want to order t-shirts. Uh, there are actually Quidditch customers now. Uh, I guess people actually play Quidditch on college campuses. And uh, we create landing pages for Quidditch. We have landing pages for mud runs. We have landing pages for uh, landscaping companies and for plumbing companies. We create content for it all. And so just blow out the content. And then make sure if you don't have a search person internally, you know, spend two or $3,000 a year to hire an outside search consultant to do a full audit of your website. Uh, and, and make sure you just got the basic uh, architecture of your site is right to search. Sean, you, you mentioned also um, about the a speaker series that may be of interest. Yeah, so we just moved to the Mosaic District, our new office, a couple uh, blocks down the road. Not a couple blocks, a couple exits down the Beltway. We'd love to have people come by. We're going to have, we have two events. If you tweet me, I can uh, send you an invite next Thursday. You can come meet Charles S. Anderson, who created Inky. And then customer service guru, customer experience guru, Phil Terry, is going to come a few weeks later. He's awesome. Uh, if you'd like to come to that event, uh, to either one of those events, please tweet me, tell me which one, and I'll send you an invite. So, Aaron, do we have a winner? This is audited by PricewaterhouseCoopers. <laughs> right. um, I'm going to butcher your Twitter handle. Katie Hanusik. Hey. Congratulations. I think I know Katie. Hey, you wanna, great. And, and let's give uh, Sean and uh, Custom Inc. A, a round of applause. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you.